Hello, everyone. Um, thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, good morning. Uh, so, welcome to repeatable benchmarking of OpenStack architectures. Um, thank you guys all for joining. I'm sure a lot of you look at those words and think, well, I know some of those words, most all of them. I know what OpenStack is, and I know what repeatable means in general, benchmarking architectures, but it is kind of a weird sentence to throw together. Repeatable benchmarking of OpenStack architectures. There's a lot of vague meanings behind that, like what, what architectures? What, what are we benchmarking? How are we making it repeatable? Uh, so I plan on diving into that a bit. Um, I've kind of sublined this getting to know your cloud or getting to know the cloud you're going to stand up. Um, but really what we're going to be talking about mostly today is performance benchmarks. Um, which in of itself is actually a ridiculous, an equally ridiculous title because benchmarking kind of does infer performance. Um, but I'll explain more what we mean by performance benchmarking, kind of dive down into these, each of those words and what I mean when I say repeatable, reliable, um, or sorry, repeatable benchmarking of OpenStack architectures. So first, um, a little bit about me, my name is Marco Cepi. Um, I've been working in the industry for quite a while. Um, I'm not actually an OpenStack developer. I'm also not even an OpenStack admin. Well, at least I wasn't until very recently. Um, what I am is I'm an OpenStack user. I consume OpenStack a lot on a daily basis, but mostly what I like doing is I like benchmarking. I love performance, and I love the whole concept of finding out if what I have is better than what I had previously or is better than what someone else has. And we do, uh, we do a lot of benchmarking in tech, outside of tech, and everywhere. So I guess what I'd like to cover first is Exactly what is benchmarking? Um, I know it seems silly to go over benchmarking, but reality, benchmarking is actually a lot of different things or can cover a lot of different facets. And at the end of the day, it's actually very hard to do, despite how simple it may seem. You run something, you get a number, you have a benchmark. But that number is worthless. It's really useless unless you have something to compare it to. And in order to have something to compare it to, you have to have a way to reliably say that this benchmark has run in the same way that I expected it to and I have run here against this other architecture, which is maybe a mutation or the same architecture or something as an evolution of that. And so because of that, because of what benchmarking encompasses, if you look at all different types of benchmarking, we have benchmarking, probably the most common one that uh, everyone in the room is familiar with is benchmarking hardware, running things like Google's Perf Kit or running Pharonic's Test Suite against hardware, which is a standard set of suite of benchmarks that do not really change against underlying hardware, which does essentially change, whether it's a virtual machine, whether it's a physical machine, whether it's something all entirely completely different. Um, that is one facet of benchmarking. That is essentially doing a profile of that machine, how this machine performs under this specific task. And the task itself doesn't necessarily mutate or change very much between runs. It's, that's the constant that you measure against. Um, but there's benchmarking across all different facets of life. You have things like, um, well, for instance, uh, keeping with the tech idea, you have things with video games. Whenever a new hardware vendor produces a video card, the first thing they do is they show, this is my video card running this game, which is the constant, at this frame per second, which is what every, which is what every gamer loves to get, is more frames a second. And that is in itself another benchmark. We have a constant of the game running against their hardware platform and comparing it to other hardware platform. But even in the real world, you have things like cars. Automotive industry will always try to sell you on a benchmark. Here is my zero to 60, which is necessarily, which is essentially showing how fast my car can go and move. And the constants is the 60 second time frame, and here is the speed at which you can excel upon that. And those are essentially repeatable benchmarks, as we have one constant that constantly flows through them. And if you maintain that constant, you can essentially do comparisons. So while one car may have far more horsepower but different torque output, the other one has a different inversion radio, what you have, the constant, is how fast it goes from zero to 60. And that's the same thing with hardware. It's the same thing with anything else. But when we start digging into this new realm of benchmarking, which is more or less, I, I can benchmark machines. I can benchmark hardware. I can benchmark things because I have a way to measure a constant. This is exactly what I'm running. And I can measure that against any piece of hardware. What happens when we start mutating? It's not a piece of hardware, but it's actually more a living deployment. How do I benchmark a series of services together in a row? How do I benchmark an entire workload? And a workload could be something as very small and minuscule as a single web app service that's just serving static HTML, or it could be a very complex living organism, something like OpenStack, which is comprised of several large components that are interconnected that have maybe varying underlying scale or components or plugins or architectures from a CPU perspective, different machine types and instance size. That's actually quite hard to start modeling. It's 
How do, I, how do I know when I'm doing a benchmark I can actually compare reliably and repeatedly against these different facets? How do I know that my OpenStack cloud that I just benchmark compares to this person's cloud? How do I start getting, where do I start defining a constant? Is it the actual benchmark I ran? Is it the, the parameters I supplied for that benchmark? Is it the actual cloud types? How do, how do we start comparing that? And that's why benchmarking starts to become really hard because as we grow complexity in the size and scale of workloads that we're modeling, it's very hard to go back and start picking out how do we reliably, repeatedly, and be able to do these comparisons. How do I know that I'm actually better than myself yesterday or than my, my competitor from, for tomorrow? How do I measure that? And so from a, from, a, from a user standpoint, from a software developer standpoint, I love benchmarking because it is that ability for you to tune, tweak, performance check, tweak, tune again. And that ability to go through and say, I have this workload, I benchmark it, I can make modifications and changes, I can scale components, I can change components out, I can modify underlying hardware, I can change stuff to how, how the connections do, I can modify networking, and then I can rerun that test. And I can verify that I have actually gotten better in performance than I had before. And that's partly having good benchmarks, but it's also partly being able to do that repeatability. So ultimately what I'm interested in doing, what I've been interested in doing is how do I model benchmarks? How do I model this whole concept of running and repeating and, and going through benchmarks and then being able to validate that as I progress in time, whether I'm benchmarking against myself from a former time or someone else's cloud or any other permutation, a point of uh, a, a production cloud versus a, a proof of concept cloud that I've stood up. But the modeling of benchmarks is, becomes an intriguing story. Um, so with that, I want to actually dive into a small story. Um, so I submitted a few talks to ODS. I've never been to ODS in my first time. It's been fantastic so far. The talks have been engaging. The discussions going around the ecosystem are awesome. I've known OpenStack. I mean, I'm aware of what it does. We use it inside the company. I'm very familiar with the components. I've spun up instances. I have workloads running on, on OpenStack in our private um, hardware. I've used HP Cloud and other public OpenStacks that are coming out. And for the most part, I, I love it as an ecosystem. Um, but I submitted a few talks because I wanted to talk about benchmarking performance because it's, there's a lot of great talks about where we're going to go with OpenStack, um, what, what, is, what these, these little components do. And we go to these, when I go to these talks and I see people talking about, well, this is the setup that we use. And I'm, I'm interested to say, well, I just saw someone speak about something similar to that, a different Cinder plugin, a different change in modification, or people talking about doing code reviews. So I want to know, do we get regressions in performance in code reviews and stuff? So benchmarking is a very interesting thing for me from a user and a consumer standpoint. I'll make sure that things are quality going forward. Um, so I submitted a few talks, um, not going to lie. I, wanna, I definitely want to come and hang out here in ODS. Um, I want to talk about performance and benchmarking. The, um, when I got accepted, I was very excited. Um, I submitted a few talks, and most of the talks I submitted were basically, there's just two really, there's this one, which we're giving now, and the other one was benchmarking workloads on top of OpenStack. Um, so, which is similar in that we're doing benchmarking, but it is a completely different topic at the end of the day because I would have just an OpenStack and I would show how you can tweak and tune underlying OpenStack components to make more performance for your applications and services that you're running on top of your cloud. Um, so, Yesterday afternoon, I happened to be sitting around, and I figured I would check the schedule, and I realized a critical mistake in my talk. Uh, I actually had this talk accepted and not my other one, which I had planned the last several months around. Uh, so this is slightly problematic because I had one cloud that I set up. I became an OpenStack admin. It was quite fun. Um, and suddenly I have to now show benchmarking OpenStack components. Well, I know the components. I know them pretty well. I know the tools that are built on the SWAC. So I said, I could probably tackle this. Um, so the first thing I did was I grabbed a coworker of mine who happens to be here and I said, please help me out a little bit. Um, so we got in contact with uh, our internal services team um, that manages our infrastructure. I said, hey, I need like, I need a couple of uh, physical machines. I need to set up like a bunch of clouds and I need to do it before tomorrow. Um, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. No sweat. Uh, so. I stayed through most of the evening at the bar, um, working through this kind of process. And at the end of the day, I was able to spin up about seven clouds. Um, I spun up, spun down, made some changes, spun up some more clouds again. And it's, it's interesting because this is not the key point of my talk, but I want to talk about how I was able to do this and why it's important to things like benchmarking and other things is, is this idea of 
the keynote speaker uh, Monday said, it, it, OpenStack is generally not that easy to set up. And I didn't want to do just a dev stack. I wanted real OpenStack, the things you would find on bare metal, on hardware with real underlying clouds. So doing so, I was able to get these clouds set up. And in the process of doing so, I realized that modeling benchmarks is actually something that we can, it's a solved problem speaking. Um, things that we've seen before, if you've ever been to ODS previous to this one, if you've seen Mark Shuttleworth's keynote, you've seen him talk about this. It's Juju. It's, uh, we've talked about a service orchestration tool, but really what it does is it helps model things. It's a modeling tool. It's a model. You can model things and you can execute those models. It gives you reliable and repeatable patterns. <laughs> Using Juju, I was able to set up a bunch of clouds for this conversation, for this talk today, and I was able to then do benchmarking on top of it in a repeatable and reliable way. And I want to talk about how that benchmarking looks, but I want to make sure that as I'm talking about the language of benchmarking and how we've been doing modeling, I want to make sure I show just real briefly exactly what Juju is so that as I start using this verbiage, I don't get too far down the weeds. Um, so Juju just is a simple modeling tool. It allows you to do things like uh, model a service, which is essentially a, a set of scripts that run. You could model units, the, the scale of that service, how many different machines need to, need to be run to do that one task. Um, Juju will do things like leader elections for you, and then you can model relations between services, how these services communicate. And using all of these tools, I was able to do repeatable benchmarking, which is something that um, from 3 p.m. yesterday till about 10 p.m. at the bar, I was able to stand up a bunch of clouds, benchmark them, tear them down, re-benchmark them again without having to really do much physical grunt work. I just modeled what I wanted, executed, and came back to it. So this is essentially what you get at a higher level. Again, you get units that, that, um, that build a, a service group, a peer of units um, that, that complete one task. You can relate things to each other. Services expose things like configuration. Um, they expose things like actions, which are ability to run tasks, strongly typed tasks. So if you've ever had to, juju, if you've ever had to SSH into a machine and run something, a rake task. Um, SSH into a machine running rally and run rally. Things like that you can actually model within Juju. And then things like storage and network. So you can do take, take advantage of the underlying cloud, whether it's another OpenStack cloud you're standing OpenStack on top of, or it's bare metal, or it's something else. So using this model, I was able to do all these things around benchmarking. And I want to talk about that uh, real briefly. But that's essentially where we're going to dive into. And the rest of this talk is a demo. It's live demos, because I love live demos as much as I love benchmarking. Um, but before I jump in, um, I want to just briefly describe the architectures that we've set up. So when I got, start doing these benchmarkings and showing where we've come through, uh, you can kind of see what we're doing. So what we've done is we've set up five clouds. Um, for this demonstration, we've set up one huge cloud, a cloud you expect to see in production, 23 physical machines that are running, um, an entire suite of OpenStack services, from all the key components out to heat, solometer, um, everything you'd need to run a robust catalog of the, of the OpenStack services. Um, that's actually running on top of another OpenStack cloud. So we're doing OpenStack on OpenStack for that. Uh, I don't have 23 physical machines sitting around. Um, and our infrastructure team was not going to lend me that many machines in this short amount of time. Um, I also have six physical machines that I have sitting around that I had access to. And I stood up two clouds on those. Um, one of them has a single Nova compute instance, and it is running on top of a Power 8 uh, PPC64 little Indian architecture machine. And I have an exact same duplicate cloud, except it has three Nova computes that are running on top of an Intel x86 machine. Um, and I did this because the Power 8 machine has quite a lot of power behind it. Um, it comes out to something like 48 cores or 40 cores and 100 and something gigs of RAM, and the Intel, the combined x86 architecture, three Nova computes come out to be about similar, just slightly higher in resources available in that pool. So I figured it'd be interesting to see the differences between, as an architecture standpoint, both an architecture of OpenStack, does one Nova compute on a beefier machine outweigh three Nova computes on slightly less beefier machines? And then also, if there's any real difference between uh, x86 and ARM, I'm in, in a Power 8 architectures as far as what you get for performances. So when we talk about architectures, architecture really goes down the chain. It's not only just the underlying architecture, the physical CPU, but also the architecture you've designed and modeled for OpenStack. And then testing those permutations, all that becomes quite intense. And the last one I have is two, I call them partial clouds, mini clouds. Um, and these clouds essentially are the bare necessities to get an OpenStack instance running. But I've switched out a couple of key underlying components. So in this case, we're benchmarking 
or comparing how MySQL and Percona compare to each other using it as a data store. So we talk about benchmarking, there's, again, many different facets, which makes it really, really hard because you, are, you can benchmark an entire OpenStack workload with something like Rally. You can benchmark single components. Um, you can use Rally to benchmark single components. There are a lot of different ways to model these permutations. And by using Juju as a model, I was able to pretty quickly, um, in the span of about five, six hours, I don't see my coworker, he must still be sleeping. Um, but in that time, oh, there he is. Uh, in that time, we were able to stand up and start benchmarking clouds, and we actually were quite successful in what we were able to do in this permutation. So I'm going to go ahead and, again, this slide's been up for a little while, um, run through some demos. So the first one I want to show you guys is this one here, which is the partial OpenStack, I guess you can say. Um, actually, it's not the one I want to show you. This is the one I want to show you. Um, so this is a more or less partial OpenStack. Um, you have your bare necessities, you have your networking. Uh, we're using Neutron Gateway, excuse me, uh, with Glance and Keystone, um, using Neutron API, Cloud Controller, Compute, RabbitMQ for messaging. Uh, and then we have Percona Cluster, which is kind of backing our, is our SQL Store backend for this. And in addition to this, um, this being the model that, that Juju's provided, move this out of the way, it's not quite OpenStacky. Um, I've deployed this MySQL bench service. And what I'm able to do now is I'm able to, using Juju, just execute tasks against an action saying, benchmark MySQL and the parameters I want you to benchmark with. And it will benchmark that service directly and give me back results. Results in a repeatable, reliable, consumable fashion. And we start talking about different suites of benchmarking tools. All of the benchmarking tools out there, no matter how robust or great, they all have different formats. And it's quite hard to compare one format to another. Pharonix Test Suite is a huge suite of tools. And it does output in the same format for every suite that you run inside of Pharonix. But comparing Pharonix results, its CPU benchmarking results, to something like PerfKit is completely, in, well, it's not impossible, but it's not easy to do because you have two different languages that come out in this result. By using Juju as a model, I'm able to say things like, well, I know how these guys report back their results, and I know how to parse those results so I can create a very simple definition, which is a description of the result of that benchmark. And then I can use that to compare things. So I can run MySQL Bench. I can run, um, well, this uses SysBench under the cover, but there are a few other MySQL performance tools which all report back in different results. I can run all of those and get the same set of data back not the same set, but the same definition of data back and start doing comparisons on that. And that adds to the, re the repeatability of this benchmark. Um, so in this one, I have Percona. Uh, in this one, hello. I have the same MySQL bench service connected to MySQL. Uh, and I can go ahead and start kicking these off and watch what happens. And it will take a little bit of a while, probably about 10 minutes. So I'm going to kick them off, come back, start talking about other kind of things you can do with benchmarking. So. From the command line, I've logged in. Um, Juju has a command line and a GUI. We saw the GUI. Here's the command line. Um, hmm? Oh, hey, yeah. You guys probably want to see what I'm doing. Uh, so this is the, which cloud is this? Ah, this is our big cloud. Let's go over to this one. I've got in my haste to create these, I didn't really name them very well. So we're just going to use Marco3. As our environment to check against. So I'm just going to show you guys essentially what we're seeing here. Um, this is again more of the more of the model from Juju. So um, much like we saw in this GUI view, these are all services. And again, services encapsulate different, si different sizes of scale. So from a machine perspective, I can see that I have um, 10, these are virtual machines running on top of an OpenStack cloud already. So I have OpenStack again on OpenStack, and I can see the components and which machines they're attached to. The same way here, I can see these are the services I have, including my MySQL bench service that I've added. Um, this is the size of the scale. Each of them has just one unit underlying it, so it's not scaled out, there's no HA. And these are the physical machines behind it. They're, Nova, they're instances running in an, on an undercloud that we have set up that IS has given me access to run on top of. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just run an action against the MySQL bench charm. So juju action do. And actually, I don't even know what the name of it is. Let's define. Uh, 
Ah, sysbench is the action. Okay, so I'm just going to run this sysbench action, which, since in Juju in the model, I've, I've told, I haven't done anything special behind here. I've just simply deployed these services and I've connected them. And Juju takes care of the transportation of information between them. So MySQL is given sysbench everything it needs to know in order to connect to that MySQL instance. And in doing so, from an admin perspective, I'd simply again just describe my model, connect the things I wish, and then execute actions against it. So I'm going to run against this. Uh, I'm just going to use the default parameters. Um, so that queues an event, and if we go back to our status output, I'm just going to look at suspend. Oh. So a slightly better, a slightly more condensed version, I can see that MySQL bench of being attached to MySQL uh, is currently executing the sysbench. It's going to take a little while to run, so we'll come back and check on the results for that later. But I'm also going to, in this time, kick off the same thing for um, the Percona, which is in Marco 2. Um, so this is go ahead and kick that off, and I'm just going to do the same thing here, but switch environments. So we go Marco 2. We see the same thing's running, but it's running this time against Percona cluster here. So both these are now executing benchmarks. They're both on separate clouds, and they're running. While we're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and move on to more interesting things. This is single services, and benchmarking single services is great. It's, it's fun to do. Uh, well, at least I think it is. I'm also probably a little weird in that respect, how much I love benchmarking. but. Um, it is, it, it's interesting to do from a perspective of how does this single component fit into the larger scale of my, my workload. So instead of running things like perfkit where it sets the default install for MySQL and then benchmarks it on hardware, this is a MySQL I've deployed, I've tuned, I could have potentially scaled it, and I'm using that same benchmark concept to create load against it and then get the results from my deployment. So in a way, this is becoming what I like to call workload benchmarking. It's not necessarily benchmarking of the hardware, it's benchmarking of the workload I've defined and I've deployed and how that, how that reacts to the load I generate against it and the parameters I've selected for it. So um, moving on, um, I have this cloud here, which is a quite a large cloud, a lot of components that you can see deployed here. This is my full-blown OpenStack install, and I've got components ranging from the core things you'd expect to find, the Novas, uh, the Swifts, the Keystones, the Neutrons, um, down to things like we have Heat in here, we have Glance, Ceph backing those for both uh, object and um, block storage, um, Cinder's in there, Solometer. So just a RabbitMQ and MySQL and MongoDB for Solometer. So all these things are deployed right now. What I can do from a, from a Juju perspective and from this repeatable benchmarking standpoint is I have a rally charm. So Last night, we came into this, um, I said, oh, wouldn't it be great to benchmark the whole OpenStack cloud? Well, not great, but we have to do this because this is what the talk is about. Um, so I sat down and I said, I knew what Rally was. Um, I've seen the, the Rally entry page. It's like great, eight great blog posts about you know, using Rally, finding all these different bottlenecks inside the OpenStack, and then working on getting those things uh, API messaging down so it's a little more robust and a little, little less noisy. Um, fixing things with the finding delays and where, and where things are falling down so that when you do start doing OpenStack at scale, OpenStack will respond properly and won't start getting bottlenecked. So Rally, for me, as a benchmark standpoint, is really awesome as a service. Um, we didn't have any way to deploy Rally currently. Uh, we don't have a charm for it, which is the kind of the definition of that service model. Um, so what I did is I sat down and I said, okay, well, let me just go ahead and install Rally. So I created this. Um, which is everything I needed in order to model how Rally works in an OpenStack ecosystem. Um, so at the end of the day, I just simply defined Rally needs to connect to Keystone, so Keystone can give it credentials to access the cloud. Uh, and then I defined a couple of these actions, which again are these tasks that you can repeatedly run against uh, the against service. I just simply said, do a boot and boot delete. The latest article I found on the Rally page was by James Page, and he uses boot and boot delete, so I figured that'll be a great way to start modeling this. Obviously, this isn't every scenario. This is a really early start of this service. I just wrote it last night. Um, but in doing so, I found not only learned more about the architecture of OpenStack, but I also found a, a few things that I can already do to improve scenarios that are existing in, in, in Rally. So as soon as this talk finishes, I'm going to start filing a few bugs and work my way into becoming an OpenStack developer and adding more scenarios to Rally that model the things that I'm interested in from a user standpoint and performance. Um, but for the time being, we'll use just boot, boot, delete. Um, they run against Nova, spin up a bunch of instances, and then 
tear them down and give you the time it does to do so. Um, so this is everything I needed to get this running. Um, from an action standpoint, uh, once I've connected this service to Keystone, I get the credentials. Uh, all I really do, and I'll show you what this looks like. Um, ah, good. Those colors will not look good. Uh, so um, I go ahead and just build a place to put my results. Since this is, again, repeatable running, I just kind of put them in this uniquely identified um, action UUID, which is supplied from Juju. Um, I then create the scenario file, which is just a bunch of, it's just very straightforward template that I plug in a bunch of values that the user can supply when they execute this task. And then I also use this from the blog post, which I thought was amazing, which is the ability to disable quotas on a, on a run for rally. Um, I then source my, my authentication information from the Nova RC file, essentially. Um, I create the deployments. I run the rally task, which is the scenario file I've just generated in YAML. Uh, and then I parse the things. I build the report HTML file, uh, and I do some additional post-processing so that I can get the results that Rally provides in a way that Juju can model, so that I can have that repeatability across that model. I can see things from Rally. Um, I can eventually do something similar with this with Tempest, where it has the same kind of output format across, across the stack, across the model. Um, so I don't have this deployed, so I'm actually going to go ahead and deploy this real quickly. So this is against the big cloud, which is Marco, which is fine. Juju trying to help me from doing silly things. Uh, so I'm just going to Juju deploy from my local repository here, since I haven't quite submitted it to the store yet, um, Rally. So this is going to deploy instead of Rally. It takes a few minutes to run. But what's great is that it's the hands-off experience. If you've ever run Rally before, you know you'll have to have your Nova RC cred somewhere. This is where the model really starts to come into play for repeatability and reliability. So I just simply tell Rally that I need to relate it to Keystone. Um, and even though the service isn't running yet, Juju is a model. I just described to Juju what I want to do, and it executes that model for me on the back end. So I'm just going to go ahead and run Juju status. Now we're going to watch Rally. And we're just going to watch it real quickly set up and run through. Um, so Juju's doing the underlying provisioning for me. It's getting me a machine somewhere. Um, it's setting up so that I can install, that it runs the installation methods for this. And again, real rough uh, cut of this. This is essentially what it looks like to install, um, install Rally. This is exactly what it runs, is I copy down the install rally.sh file that's in the GitHub repo. And, wow, that looks terrible. Let's add syntax highlighting to this one. Um, I installed Apache 2 to serve the web page. I, because of restrictions with our enterprise and networking, I have to run through a pip mirror, but this will be fixed when I get around to finishing this. But essentially, I pip install um, the dependencies. I just run the install rally, rally sh script with a couple modifications that makes it more robust. Um, run the db recreate, which is in the, the wiki page, and then uh, pip install the tools I need in order to do benchmarking from a Juju perspective. Uh, and that's it. This is everything I do. So instead of having to, every time I want to run a benchmark, spin up a machine, SSH into it, run these commands, walk away, um, Juju lets me model that one time and repeat that everywhere. And this could be a bash script, Python script. This could be using Ansible playbooks under the book, any, sort, any configuration management tool, which is why I like Juju from a model perspective, because it doesn't enforce any kind of real constraints on how I can write my stuff. I can continue to operate as willy-nilly as I am, which as a, as a general developer and user, I just write a bunch of bash scripts and stick them in places and rerun them again. But from an ops perspective, you can actually use and leverage things like configuration management, uh, which make this really nice. And that's essentially it. And then this event is executed whenever I connect to Keystone. Keystone sends me credentials. I write them to a file. And then I source this file whenever I want to run a benchmark. Um, so let me go back to here. So we can see that it's now running the install rally.sh. This takes a little bit of time to run. Uh, so while this is running, I'm also going to move over to another cloud. Um, so many clouds. Oh, here it is. Let's move this back over here. So it's connected here to Keystone. The GUI kind of updated what I did on the command line. Um, this is that cloud. This is uh, these two guys here. These guys are pretty interesting. So this is my other two clouds. These are my, my, my PPC64, Little Indian, my Power8 cloud, and my x86 architecture cloud. Um, 
while this is installing Rally, we'll come back to it. I'm going to go over here and run some benchmarks. Um, as soon as I fix these screens, I wasn't I should have known to increase my font size. Um, there we go. So I've got two rallies already deployed. Um, this is again, this one here is my power, whoa, my, my power eight install up here in this tab. This one here is my x86 um, install. I've got two rallies deployed. They're both ready to benchmark. Um, at least that's what Juju's telling me. So what I can do down here is I can go ahead and just run these benchmarks. Um, what's great and what I've done with the rally charm is um, I don't just want to run rally as the same defaults because that's what we can do currently today and it's not very interesting. I want to be able to tweak my benchmark so I can simulate different variances of load. And in doing so, um, with the model I've created here, uh, where is it, there you are. Um, I actually define the boot and delete and the boot cycles and the parameters that I want to set for this. So this I went pretty simple. You can set the flavor of the image, the number of tenants, the users per tenant, the number of times, the concurrency, and the networks per tenant. And I, I went and picked defaults that I thought were sane. Um, I think I may need to tweak them a little more. They're not quite as sane as I imagined. Um, so I'm just going to do a few overrides from the command line here, but I'm going to execute this with just a smaller batch so it completes in less than 10 minutes, uh, which is the goal. Um, let's see. I am currently pointed at the PPC one. Let's do Juju. Um, so because there's no Cirrus image for... Um, For, PP, for Power 8, I'm going to use Trusty, PPC64, LE, EL. Uh, so I'm going to run a little less than this. We'll run 10 times at a concurrency of 3. This will give us a quick, simple, repeatable uh, benchmark results that we can look at. So I'll go ahead and run this. And so it started the benchmark up there. Um, I'm going to come back over to here. We'll just use the trusty since I don't have power eight on this cloud. Um, run it against here. Uh, so now we should have both these running. It should take about, well, it finished a lot faster than I thought. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Um, so these will run, these will come through, and eventually we'll get results out of them. So the, we're creating a, we created the scenario, we're running the benchmark on both of these. Let's check what we're doing over here. Um, our rally against our big cloud is set up, so I'm going to go ahead and run uh, Juju Action Do. We'll do something real big on this one, um, just to kind of get some comparative numbers. So we'll do on rally zero, run uh, We'll just run with the defaults, which is 100 at 10 instances. So we'll do boot and delete. Um, so while this is running, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the Nova list for all tenants. This is on the PPC64 machine. Well, we can't really see it very well, but um, we can kind of watch it rally spin up and, and dump out instances to here. Um, and in a few moments, we should be done, and we should be able to look at results for this. So. There we go. So we're building a few more. These are coming from the, the rally benchmark now. So the charm is essentially exercising everything, and I didn't have to do anything but tell, describe my model and execute it. Um, once these are done, we can look at the results. But let's see how we're doing with our MySQL clouds. Um, so these are still running. They're going to run a little longer. Um, I know we're coming close to the end of the session, so I want to make sure if anyone has any questions, I can start answering them. And then right as the session ends, we should have results. And I can show you how that looks. So while these are 
finishing up running. Um, does anyone have any questions for me so far? Ah, it's that thorough, man. Um, cool, so I can go ahead and show you previous results, actually, if that makes sense. Um, so Juju gives you a mechanism to go back and look at everything, so I'm just gonna say, which environment am I in? It's like 12, Juju switch. Uh, to do action status. So I've been running a bunch of a bunch of benchmarks, uh, as you can see. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the most recent one. Um, so that's not the most recent. Grab this one here. There we go. So it does summarize very briefly the results. I'm still working on making the parsing as intense as you'd expect. Um, but it sets things like the overall average number of seconds to run for the entire run combined. Uh, and it also gives you the URL where to get all of the data that was generated from Rally at that time. So this is something that the charm will do for you. And I can see uh, the report HTML. Uh, if you ever run Rally, you're familiar with these things. They're amazing little reports that give you all the details that ran during that duration. Um, as well, the raw JSON results are dumped here as well. So if you want to grab them, you can do so. And then also the scenario that was built to run is in here as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to over the course of the next um, couple months leading up to Tokyo to kind of hardening and adding in scenarios that I see from a user perspective that are missing in Rally, um, modeling those in, in the Rally charm and then working on getting the Rally charm itself incubated as a process so that people who wish to use or using uh, Juju can actually use the Rally Charm itself to execute and, and run against that. Um, there are much more interesting things I could have done with this demo. Um, we could start comparing things like what does KVM do versus LexD in Nova Compute? What does uh, Hyper-V do compared to other Nova Compute instances? Um, I don't have all the hardware available for that for this demo, but the permutations you can start testing and modeling inside of, of this example here become quite immense and the actual ability to say, here's my hardware, stand up in about a matter of 20, 30 minutes, a full functioning cloud, and then benchmark how that performs, tear down and run again, is from a benchmarking perspective, from a user who's just becoming an admin, it's a very compelling story for me, which is why um, this stuff really caught my eye. And um, the, the testament of what we did over the afternoon yesterday, I think, shows that uh, with very limited time and resources, you can actually start modeling and solving the problem of OpenStack being too difficult to set up. And then not only that, but taking the next further to bulletproofing it for when you actually need to go production to make sure it is as performant as you'd expect. Um, we'll just real quickly check on these. If they didn't finish, they didn't finish. Um, they finished. So uh, let me go ahead and grab these real quickly. So I'm just going to refresh this page. Um, since Juju is a model, we're building tools on top of Juju to make that modeling easier. One of the things we're building are things like lightweight UIs, like this one, where you can go and show results um, of the actions, start drilling down into other components. So this is the Power 8 run, and this will be the PPC 60. I mean, this is the Intel one. We kick this off at probably 1836. Uh, so if you look just real briefly between the two of them, it looks like within a duration of two seconds, the run. Um, so it's interesting to see that when you have, yeah, when you have slightly more Nova computes that are lesser power, they kind of equal one Nova compute that runs on a more beefier machine. And um, that the distribution of maybe multiple Novas versus one Nova is actually not, is actually pretty negligible. So if you have one beefy machine that's running Nova versus three, well, you don't necessarily have the high availability that you want from Nova compute, you can actually start modeling, maybe instead of scaling out, more scale up for hardware for Nova computes. So that's things that you can get from interesting just overviews from running these in different permutations. Um, with that, we have a minute left for anyone questions. Otherwise, uh, thank you all for your time. Enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>